in a bit uh, about the observable in a gravitational theory. So by gravitational theory, I will focus only on general relativity because basically all of the other candidates for gravitational theory will be more complex than uh, uh, general relativity. And basically everything that I'm going to say is also applicable for, for the theory. So now by observables, what I mean is a physical quantity that can be measured. So there are like two parts so to an observable. The first one is physical quantity, and the other one is d measure. So the d measure part I'm going to completely ignore because it's going to involve more discussion about actual experiments and apparatus. And already defining a physical quantity uh, in uh, in uh, general relativity and gravitational theory is not something which is uh, which is really simple. So here you have the part which is physical and the part which is just a quantity. So by quantities, I would mean any field, any object that is living on, on uh, space time. So let's say that your space time is some manifold M. What can be understood as being a quantity, for example, would just be a position X on space time, which is something that we could expect to be measurable just where we are living on space time. But it can so be also any field, so any, for example, matter. Or electromagnetic fields, or whatever you want, located so at this point or wherever you want on on space time. So now to re really define this uh, for gravitational theory, let's start again by just discussing what GR is kind of all about. There are three big points in general relativity that we need to be careful with. The first one is that the theory is background dependent. So GR is all about a theory of space-time and of geometry of, of space-time. Are there physical quantities that cannot be measured? Oh, uh, well, the point is most quantities I, mean, I don't know how to measure. So I, I would say no. And the idea is a physical quantity that should be able to measure it. The question of how to measure them is is not going to be easy at all. But for most of the quantities I can have in mind, I have no way of really measuring them. Because at the end of the day, we see that almost everything can be very critical, but we don't know how to measure them at all. So GR is all about the geometry of space-time, and this is given by a metric. And background independent means that we don't presuppose anything about about what the metric is. Of course, what we could say is, well, let's fix the background. So for example, the space is flat, and we can make perturbation around this flat background. But if you do that, it's clear you already make an assumption about the structures of your space time. And that's not something that we want to do from the field. Now, the second point, which is really important, is general. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, could you uh, light it a bit uh, larger? Yes, yeah. I can. Yes. Thank you. Is, is that enough? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. So is general covariance. So covariance is a principle that is saying that the law of physics must be independent in the coordinate system that we are using to describe them. And in general relativity, they may be independent in, under any uh, choice of reference frame. So this is saying that laws of physics. Oh, that's not big enough. Does not depend. Not depend on frame of reference. So a frame of reference is just a coordinate system. So, for example, it can be polar coordinate, it can be described, it can be Cartesian coordinate, 
to be any coordinate that you're using. And of course, we don't expect the law of physics to be dependent of the frame that you're choosing to, the coordinates that you're choosing on space time to describe them. If, for example, I'm saying that my position is here in events, in Waco, it uh, does not really matter if my position is described with respect to coordinate fix at the Greenwich, or if I'm just saying that the zero, zero, zero position is when I'm where I, I am. The coordinate is exactly the same. And the last point, which is really important, is diffeomorphism in variance. So, in, so DPOs are just a map from space time into itself, which is invertible and which is differentiable. And General relativity is what we call invariant under diffeomorphism. Now, to understand this concept of invariant, we have to introduce the concept of symmetry and the fact that uh, the fact there are two kinds of symmetries. So symmetries are the transformation law of your system that leave it invariant. So let's say you have some fundamental quantities that you're using to describe your system. For example, an action which is going to depend on the field or like tangent. So anything that you're using to derive the equation of motion of your system, then symmetries are going to leave this object invariant, but may not leave the equation of motion invariant, and also, and more importantly, are not going to leave the physical quantities invariant. That's why we need to introduce two kinds of symmetries. The first one is going to be physical symmetries. Now, let's say I'm my physical system that I'm describing is described by a physical state that I'm going to call phi. This is going to depend on the field of my theory. And under a physical symmetry, this is going to change into something else. Now, it also exists symmetries which are not physical, which we are calling gauge symmetries. And those ones are encoding redundancy of your system. Under such a transformation, you're not mapping a physical state into another physical state. The solution is still the same. So in a sense, it encodes resonance. So it's, there is nothing physical. Of course, they are still super important. It's, I mean, most of the physical particle physics things about so gauge bosons are about the same transformation. But with respect to physical quantities, they are really important to take into account. Because let's imagine that you have uh, quantities on space or on space time that I'm going to call let's call it A. And I have quantities of space that I can put in A. Now, if these quantities are not invariant under gauge transformation, and those transformations are not physical, it means that A, well, is not really physical either. Because if it was physical, it could not be dependent on something which is not physical. Now, in, in general relativity, as I said, those gauge transformations are different. And the DPOs, I said, are mapped from the space time to the space time. So let's assume that your physical quantities depend on the local point X on space time. For example, I'm measuring the temperature here. No, so I am here, so X items. And someone is telling me, okay, this is what you are measuring, something which is here at items. Uh, diffeomorphism move a point of space time arbitrarily wherever you want. So these things does not make any sense because X items is a fixed point on space time. This transformation, which are not physical, moves this point anywhere on space time. So the only way for these quantities to be gauge invariant and to be physical is to be constant. So temperature is constant anywhere on the universe. I'm quite certain we are not really happy about that. Uh, can I ask what? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. It seems, it seems to me that general covariance and diffeomorphism invariance is the same thing. Well, in fact, if, if you pick two of those, you have the last one. What do you mean? Okay. Uh, so so if, if you assume that the theory is background independent and generally covariant, it will imply that it is diffeomorphism invariant. So you could say, well, the theory is not generally covariant, but it is still background independent and diffeomorphism invariant. That's not possible. Either you're keeping all three or you're getting rid of two. Yeah, so I guess I don't understand precisely what general covariance means. Diffeomorphism invariance is pretty clear mathematically, but what does? Well, okay, that's that's because in fact general covariance was never 
really define uh, mathematically well. It was always a lot when you know the law of physics does not depend on the frame you are using. And I agree that if since dipolarism are mapped from M to M, say well, well, reference frame are just transformation map under dipolarisms. So those two are coming together. But the point is, let's say the theory is not background independent. So you're choosing a background metric. Then it's not going to be default invariant either, because you need to conserve your, the background that you choose. So the only transformations that are admissible here will be the ones that are conserving your background, so the isomorphism of the background. And then it still might be generally covariant in the sense that the transformations that are admissible are only the ones which are isomorphism. So it's not going to be covariant under all kinds of diffeomorphism, but only the one of the background. But I, I agree that this one is kind of the starting point that you want to have. You have a load of physics which are independent of the choice of frame. So if it was Newtonian gravity, it would be just choice of Newtonian frame. If it was special relativity, it would be special covariant, the only Lorentz confirmation. And in GR, you want the stuff which is the more general. So I don't know if it's really clear, but. Uh, it's more like a passive and active transformation, maybe like a different feel like uh, the shape of whole. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say that because at the end, I want to promote this into something which is fully active. Oh, yeah. the, 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 the exact problem with this is that you still have something which is independent of the field, which is not dynamical. In fact, the, so the issue that I feel, so just to finish, Basically, this observable, the only way to have it physical is to have it constant on space time or to have it non local. So it's going to depend on a, on a region of space time and not a point. Now, if you do that, so if this find non locally, then in general relativity, it will imply that it is also breaking causality. So, which means it's, it's going to depend on events which are not causal to the action you want, events you want to describe. So, if you're drawing the cone of light, an event which is here, because of causality, should only be able to depend on events that appear in the past. So sorry, the event that is here. Can only depend on events that appear in the past and only affect events that appear in the future. Now, in general, if a physical observable must be non local, then it will also imply that it might depend on the event. This event here might depend on what happened, happened in here, which makes not really sense from the point of view of physics. Yeah, any question? Now, the way to solve that is exactly to come back to general covariance. The frame of reference that we have here are coordinate system on space time. They are not dynamic. And in fact, if you, if you kind of go back to the beginning of general relativity, this, this issue can, can be traced back to a, like a quote of Einstein, which is saying that if you want to describe now the equation of motion with respect to a frame of reference, by choice, you introduce clock and roads, which are your frame, and everything else. But if the theory is background independent, there is no way to make this separation. Everything has to come together. So instead of defining an event by a point X, which is non-dynamical and fixed, these things is going to depend on the field itself. So you must locate the point by using everything which is dynamic. So instead of having like, so instead of offering a map, which are your coordinates from the space time are four in four dimension. We have something which is going to, and which is non dynamical, we have something which is dependent on the field. So you must follow general covariance in terms of a frame which are already dynamical. So you're starting with a manifold where you are field living on them, which are the metric, which can be matter. From them, you're extracting four coordinate system, and then you express everything else in terms of those coordinates. And if you do that, well, you don't have a problem about locality. Because now, of course, some events are going to be non local with respect to a choice of dynamical frame. Some events are, but we need some system where those events are local. Now, if you take 
everything into account, there is still a small problem, which is which is causality. It's almost impossible to recover causality in, in this kind of system. And that's why we cannot hear a lot, or in general relativity or in gravitational theory, they do not exist local degrees of freedom. They have to be non-local. However, this is kind of in conflict with everyday life. And one way to try and solve this issue is really to take this thing seriously and write a more generalized notion of what is the variance locality of the and put everything at a dynamic level. And that is kind of really hard to do because you need to be sure that you can promote everything which was hit on space time from just talking with some field at the beginning. And in, in gravity, since we expect general reality, relativity in vacuum to still be a well defined theory, you should be able to do everything without introducing any attack. Now, that's really complicated to do. And one way to do it is to use the fact that, for example, space time has boundary, but uh, I don't uh, really want to go uh, into uh, those debates. So, well, that's it. Uh, I hope it was clear. Uh, yeah. And if you have any questions, then uh, feel free to. Okay, thank you very much uh, for a very interesting talk. So, questions? So, if it's a space time which is without boundary, then it can be any different diffeomorphism. If there is boundary, then it can be only diffeomorphism which are leaving the boundary in value. Yeah. So it's, it, it will be, so if M has boundary, <laughs> there will be such that the action of the diffeomorphism on the boundary is still the boundary. So there is a way to relax that by introducing boundary condition on the field that you're using. But let's say that for now, the most general condition is this one. Point by six. Yes, point by six. Is it clear <laughs> how like physical fields transform under diffeomorphism? Yes, it's clear. Yeah. yeah, the metric transform as a dancer. Yeah, part. Well, everything transform as uh, as they are defined. So scalar field just transform as scalar field. So if you find the scalar field under a different morphism, it will transform that way. So uh -huh. just by composing with the different morphism on the right, and if you go up to tensors, everything transforms. Yeah, it's scalar field transform like that. But suppose they have like a Dirac spinner. How does that transform? Uh, okay, I don't remember the exact law, but it's, it's clear how they from the top. Yeah, it is clear. I see. Yes. I'm quite sure someone here will remember the how to write, but I don't remember how to write, but it is clear how they from the top. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Sorry, I couldn't understand the, the uh, My bad, thank you. Uh, so, suppose we want to measure the, the scalar curvature or something at a certain point, you say it's physical. No, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. I, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't say that. It, it has to be physical. But the point is, let's say you're defining the curvature and you put it at a fixed space, at a fixed point X. This is not going to be gauge invariant because this fixed point X can be moved anywhere on space time because of different morphisms. So at first, you're saying, well, so let's say I want to measure at this point L of X. Now, X is going to transform arbitrarily under different morphisms. And so these things, that depend on the choice of gauge. So this is not possible. So, and the reason it is a problem is because we do expect temperature to be an observable. So to solve that, it is sufficient to say that, well, X, in fact, is not defined in terms of a coordinate system which does not depend on the field. This X here, I can define it, for example, as a function of the matrix. And then if you do it properly, the load transformation of the curvature and of this new object here, which is not dynamical and transformed under different morphisms, is going to be invariant. G is a matrix. Yeah, G is a matrix. So the G is a function of also X. Yes, OK. So yes, J is a, is a tensor from uh, space-time to uh, symmetric tensor. That's true. Okay, and that's okay. 
um, how to, uh, wait, okay. You can just think of this abstractly as a point, right? As yes, but you have to, to, to think of it as a point which is dynamical. So you have to think of the point as being defined in terms of your field. So, uh, I'm not. Can I ask a question? What's the scale of cur curvature where I am independent of coordinates? Yes, that question is completely well defined. But everything has to be defined with respect to something. So the point, the curvature, is, you can ask the question, what is the curvature of anywhere with respect to you? That is a well-defined question. But you see that that definition of the point with respect to you, it's not just fixing upon X independently of you. And you are a dynamical field. So this is a relational matter between you. There is a point that I want to describe, and since I describe it with respect to me, and I am dynamical, this point has to be dynamical. Just because I am, and I'm defining the point with respect to me. Yeah. structure there. No, it is background independent in the sense that there are everything is dynamical. There is an history, but the history itself is dynamical. So, of course, there is the initial choice and initial condition of your space time that those one are kind of a choice that you are uh, assuming at the beginning, and everything can be derived from this. But at where you are, so well after the choice of initial condition, everything is dynamical. And you're just using the fields that you have. So, before even supposing that the space time exists, you have your fields which are living in a field space, and you are using them to induce what the space time is. So, in a way, this object here, M, is not the one you're starting with. You're just saying, well, I have a space, big phi, where my field are living and where the field value are living. And I'm using this space here to induce the definition of my space time. So the space time is emergent from a field space. So this is also the kind of the answer to your question. So yes, if you don't start from space time, everything is defined with respect to space time. But this is not something we want to do. Because if you do that, you already kind of assume that there were a background, which is your space time where you're living. Whereas this, yeah, those points are all emergent from your fields. And that's why it's coming back to what we said at the beginning between active and passive diffeomorphisms. What we call passive diffeomorphisms are some objects which act on the space time. So independently of the field. Active diffeomorphism only acts on the field. So at the end, we want to get right of everything which is passive and promote everything to be independent of the field. Because then we can obtain observable, which does make sense. We do make sense. Yes? So I have a question about like right now, graph taking away experiment, what are they measure is really what's your area here? Is it quality or are they just? Depends on your, like, it's very dependent. So, can you repeat the questions? So, uh, we have a gravitational experiment right now. Lisa, yeah. So, if they measure something, I don't know what they measure, but what they measure is, they they measure is they measure like, it's, it's, you define. it's a physical quantity you define here. Uh, the point is, every time we are making those experiments, we are fixing a background. So it's, it's, in, in practice, we are always picking a background where, when we are making an experiment. So in gravitational waves, to obtain them, you can just put linear and an equation. And this is fixing a background when you're doing it. Now, while it works really well, there is still the question about what happens if you are observable, which are not defined cartographically. But the point is, this whole approach is not really important as long as you can make a perturbative expansion around the background. So in all the experiments that we are making in everyday life, in the lab, we are living approximately, approximately well on the background. Now, if you want to be sure that you're describing everything that the theory can describe, and if you want to take the fact that GR by, by definition is supposed to be a theory about the dynamics of space-time, you cannot presuppose a background. 
And it is possible to write down quite complicated, but still possible to write down observables, which are not perturbatively defined. They only exist if you are in the non perturbative regime of general relativity. I don't know if you can answer your question. So, so based on what you say, how do we really get a, a physical problem to define real life? Sorry? Like a, we always do an experiment, so this is not an invariant, what do you say? But yes, what, what's the reality? It is invariant one with respect to some background. For example, when we are measuring the gravitational waves, we compare what we measure with what the theory is giving us in the perturbative regime. Now, there is, when you're doing that, you are making some error because you are making an approximation of the, of the theory. Now, until now, we have no proof that there are non perturbative correction to uh, the measurements we are doing for gravitational waves. Now, let's assume that there are. The only way to try to explain them with respect to the theory is going with this formalism. It is to find a way to express the measurement in terms of a reference frame, which is dynamical, which is ours, and then express everything in terms of this dynamical object. Now, I, agree, I completely agree, and in fact, that's that the main, main issue and the main question is to find a way to show that there are corrections which are non perturbative. And it should be possible in a way that every time we are trying to do this, or try to define more appropriately observables, as long as we obtain perturbative, they are always breaking causality. We never manage to obtain, at least theoretically, an observable which are not breaking causality. The only way we found to re-establish causality is to go non-perturbative. You wrote that uh, you, you consider point X as a function. Yes, yeah. of the field. And where is G, G defined on phi or on M? Okay, so, so G is a metric and it is defined as a field of material. So you just start with a bunch of fields. Let's say we are working in vacuum gravity, so we only have the metric. So you, you start with the, with the metric. From the metric, you can extract four scalar fields, which are going to ask, uh, which are going to work at your four coordinates. And from this four coordinate system, you are going to reconstruct the space time. So we don't start from the space time with fields on top. We start with a field space from which we extract the space time. So what, what, what kind of object is G? How should, how should I think of G as? You can think of it just as a metric. What, what space? The metric of a manifold. Okay, so if you want to go that way, yes, this field space is also a manifold. So you can have a super metric living on it. And from this one, you can extract this one. So you have a metric in here, which are inducing a space time structures. And since your initial metric was dynamical, it induced metric is also dynamical. Now, of course, what you can then do, because, because then this metric is going to be to go uh, just to define your space M, you can still represent this space M in terms of coordinate living in R4. In a way, if, if you go going back to this map, you have many differences to say, well, I have first, my first operation is kind of one going from M to M, And which is going to depend on the field. Oh, sorry, not M. Uh, yeah, uh, So I have a function which depends on the field, which is going from my wall space of field and which is defining my space time. And here, of course, you can still use the usual coordinate map to obtain coordinate in R4. The only things you added was this one. So that the whole system that you're using at the end is a composition of these two. And it's going to be dependent on the field. So it's a way to kind of, uh, I don't want to say, erase space time from the discussion because we want space time to be emergent from something which is a bit more fundamental. And, and is that really the case? 
that face time is a metal frequency which is not fundamental. Well, that's uh, something that I like to believe. That, well, because uh, there, I mean, you really believe that fundamentally there's some intrinsic field that's there, and uh, space time emerges from that field. But, but, okay, let's say that space time is not emergent from something more fundamental. Uh -huh. Then I have to get it right about his two over three I hypothesis. Because if I don't, I will be stuck to a theory which has no observables. And this is clearly not something that I want. So the first thing was to say, okay, then observations are relative to another system, which is also dynamical. And the way to explain that in the best way is to put everything back into this field here, and then to reconstruct everything here. But then if I'm doing that, I can just say, well, I started with this one. I never had to have an underlying space time. Well, I didn't realize that this is as deep as this, but uh, right. okay. Uh, what's wrong with just taking the universe as the space? I, mean, no, I guess okay. we're just. Well, nothing is wrong with that. But then yeah. the question is still how do you define observables in the context of a theory which is going to be diffeomorphism invariant and background independent? And then you arrive at the point that, well, it seems to have no observables. Because then nothing is gauge invariant. Nothing makes sense to evaluate at the fixed space time point. I need to make those space time points to be themselves dynamical. They themselves feel. But if they are filled, well, you can see them in living in kind of a more fundamental space, which is the space where all the fields are living. Well, you can just take the point of view that this universe comes with a background gauge. Of course. If, if you start with the fact that the universe comes with a background, then this is not the case. You don't have different invariants. You have invariants in the isomorphisms, which are conserving the background. And then you have a whole family of observables, which I will define with respect to this. Yeah, yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's why the starting point was really to take those, what, those three. And I agree that if you're saying, well, there is a background, let's say, uh, if I IJ, so I have Minkowski background, then here I have all of these isomorphisms of Minkowski, and this still leaving a lot of observables, which I will define. I agree. That's completely agree. But if you're saying that, you're saying that GR is not also the theory that you want to use to describe general relativity. You're saying that by definition, there is something more than just GR. Saying that there is a fundamental object, which is just the metric. Where is the background metric? Yeah. And to be completely fair, because even if you're doing that, well, okay. In fact, every theory can be made diffeomorphism in that. Uh -huh. That's not super complicated. You just have to make a general transformation here uh -huh. and just say that this object now is going to be dynamical. So you introduce your background as a dynamical field. Okay. Of course, then the equation of motion on this are going to be trivial and it's not going to be changing a lot. But uh, then, just if you're starting with the background, it's not taking GR as saying, well, space time is completely dynamical. Uh -huh. You seem to, to disagree. No, no, no. I mean, I don't, think, I don't disagree with the logic, but uh, the world doesn't seem to be like, I mean, from my knowledge. No, I agree. That's what I say at the beginning. The point is now to. If it's impossible to find any observation yeah. which does not, which is not correct if there is a background, then maybe we are missing something. But since it is possible in GR to write observation which are only possible if you're taking the fact that everything is dynamical, then maybe it is possible. In fact, so if, it's, if we never manage to find an observation where this is necessary, uh, I agree, it's not, it's not maybe important. But then it's also saying that GR is not the right theory for gravity. Well, but what do you mean? You know, the GR has the classical predictions, right? Like the gradient, Mercury, and things like sure. that. You don't call that the outcomes of uh, general relativity? Yeah, I, I do, I do. But GR is also, a, in GR, you also have everything independent of the background. If you want to take the theory as uh -huh. it is. So now if you're telling me that you can always take a background and there's nothing physically, I do need to add something to GR. Maybe the adding thing is just to say, well, there is a background. Okay. That is, yeah, there is a background of the universe. But then I would like to know where this background is coming from. Yeah, that, that's pretty, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And if the question is, well, it's coming from an underlying geometric dynamics, it's kind of saying, well, there is no background. This one is already dynamic. Uh -huh. So may, it might be described by other equations and ancient relativity. That's not a problem. But I, I have no idea what it can be.
Well, there are modified version of GR, which are exactly what you're saying, starting with saying there is a background and try to render it dynamically, dynamical from a quantum perspective. But uh, uh, maybe the right answer, maybe I, I do like doing that, but I don't know if it's the correct one either. Uh -huh. You had a question? I'm not quite sure how to ask the question, uh -huh. but this is all classical H particles. This is all classical for me. Yeah. How much civilized for H bar is not? Almost everything up to a big, uh, big point. Oh, okay. No, no, you can basically do the same, but if you want to really write down what the observable are, you have to assume that the Hilbert space of your observation and the Hilbert space of the rest of the system are decoupled, which is kind of losing the most interesting of the theory, but I, I do hope that by introducing more entanglement between the states you want to describe and the state of the system, it is possible to go further with that. So there are a lot of stuff doing, uh, being done in quantum reference frame, and which are pushing this in the direction of emerging from the quantum perspective, and it seems to be working quite well. Uh, question. Sure. So um, I'm still confused. So what's what's wrong with uh, with the technique the added? With like uh, with the G and B study, I mean like we retreat. No, 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 nothing is wrong at all. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. I'm not saying that things are wrong. I'm just saying that if we want to take those three hypotheses seriously, there are a few steps that we need to do. Because if you don't, you just end up with not having any observable. If you're doing a perturbative expansion, you can of course get rid of almost this whole discussion. I'm saying almost because even if you're doing a perspective function, you have still to introduce a relation between what you want to observe and where you are. So you have to dress the observable that you want to look at with dynamical field. But this is easier than just saying that, oh, you start with something which are only the field and you will cross everything because you still have a background. So I'm not, is there is anything wrong with what we are doing with GR and now because there are no proof whatsoever that I know of, that GR has a non-perturbative correction. Just, we can construct non-perturbative observable with this, which are, we just cannot make perturbative. Or if you want to make them perturbative, you have to make the, well, some of them you can make perturbative, but you have to go to infinite, uh, you have to put an infinite expansion if you want to really uh, have something which is finite, and some of them have non-perturbative correction. Just if it is the case that it exists in GR, then we might need to go through this formalism to represent them correctly in the theory. It's possible to rewrite the existing theory into, into this framework, or is there something that? What do you mean? Is, 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 is it possible to rewrite the existing all things yes. in the place? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I can even rewrite the scalar field. Uh, just a fifth scalar can do with this. Because the only thing that it needs is background independent and deep and invariance. And by doing a small transformation, you can render all theory background independent and deep and invariant. And then you can do everything which is in this logic. In fact, uh, it was things first done in the 80s or 90s with parameterized field theory. And this is basically what we are trying to do in, in general relativity to express everything such so that diffeomorphism invariant is not here anymore. And the, only, the, the most easiest way that we found to do that is to, to get rid of space time and just represent everything in terms of the field, since everything has to be dynamic. Yeah, how can you describe okay. that? Oh, sorry. Uh, let's say equation in this common Sorry? What is the Einstein equation? What is the equation that describes the dynamics? I mean, in this formalism, you can write the Einstein equation. That's not a problem. So you can write the Einstein equation. This is still general relativity. Yeah, right? usually like Einstein equation is like a deep, uh, the differential equation, right, of the metric uh, mm -hmm. with, with respect to the coordinate. But now you say that coordinate is depend on the metric, so it's kind of. Uh, I'm just saying the coordinate are well, okay, okay. That's not mm -hmm. I mean, but yeah. even we, let's say I'm adding matters. Then you might just use the matter as coordinates. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say you don't want to add matters and you want to do everything in pure gravity. Well, it still is going to work. You can use some degrees of, of uh, freedom from the metric 
to express every, everything in terms of those degrees of freedom. Then some ancient equations are completely trivial because it's just going to express itself in terms of itself. So not a problem, but everything else is going to be expressed in terms of those coordinates, which are coming from the method. You just need to, okay. I mean, in 4D, there are more than four degrees of freedom in the method. I'm just saying I pick four of them and I express everything else in terms of those four. And this is something that you can do provided you have a boundary. It's dynamical. You said it's dynamical here, right? Five. Five? Yeah. Uh, this is the space of all dynamical fields. This is the manifold of all dynamical fields. Is it a manifold? Dynamical fields. It's dynamical. <laughs> well, which means everything which is entering your action. So all, all the metric, all the matter fields, everything that you want. In fact, everything. Everything. Without X. Without X. It's just a set of, of objects which are. Yeah. For the equation of motion, it's here. Oh, okay. That's um, that's the thing with everything. Oh, but no x. Do you write the equation? So, okay, to do that, you need to write an action on this space here. And in some cases, you can do it. And if you try to do it, the action that you write on, uh, on, this, uh, on this space of, of field, uh, well, they are doing it in cosmology, for example, and they relate that to nonlinear Schrodinger equation. But for general relativity, I, I, I don't know. I would love to like, pull back the action of general relativity to this space here, but uh, until now, we have no idea how to do it. We, we know how to do it in some really specific case in cosmology, but not in general. But yes. For that to work, if, if it's really the case, we need to be able to rewrite the action in terms of what happening here. And in the sense, it's just taking the what is happening on space time to a more fundamental space of all the fields. And maybe you could have the same question here what are the symmetries? And you would have to do that. But if you are doing this transformation correctly here, nothing is going to be redundant in terms of those fields because you would just have the all the fields and their possible dynamics. Let's face universal. Is it unique? Or do you, there are several choices? Uh, you can render in unique. Yes, it is unique because, it, in fact, it's kind of the universal space of everything that you can put in your theory. So if you want to add something else, well, you just say, well, there is something more here. But if I'm just doing that, I'm kind of saying nothing because. I need to define it more properly. But yes, it is unique. What is not unique is this map here. This projection map from this to here is not unique at all. In fact, as long as you have more than four fields in 4D, then you will have way, a lot of way to go here. Because the only restriction that you have to have is, well, it's defined a well-defined coordinate system. And there are lots of ways to do that. And you assume that that space is a manifold. It seems like a this one. Yeah, yeah it is a manifold. It, it, it is a manifold. If you really believe that such manifold exists, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you say, I do believe it exists. How can you say it is a manifold? Because it, 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 well, if you are okay, if you are thinking that there is an assumption is the smoothness of all the fields. Okay. If all the the fields are smooth, then it is going to be a manifold. If some of them are not, uh, then uh, well, it's really interesting mathematical structure, but it might not be uh, my. But I do believe it exists. I do believe it exists. Oh, yes, yes, it's necessarily infinite dimensional. It, mathematically, is it well defined? Like infinite dimensional math? I don't know. I guess manifolds are well defined. They are. There's no big issue about infinite dimensional. Such. Um, the bigger issue is about reduction of regularity. Yeah. The, the, the biggest issue is defining this map correctly. Because depending on which field you are taking, you might just have something which makes no sense here. And uh, this map can yeah. define everything that you can construct here. If you can have this map, so this thing is just nothing, not even a manifold. You have to be really careful into which field you're taking. But again, in pure gravity, just with the metric, if you're taking a space time with boundary, you can make this whole construction exercise, at least locally around the boundary. So uh, if the space is not geodesically complete, which, which might happen a lot in, in GR, then there will be some issue. 
But uh, at least in the neighborhood of the boundary, you can make the construction make sense. I thought you don't want the boundary. You don't want like a fixed background, right? So. Okay, now there's a question about is the boundary part of the background or not? Or is the phone something else? Uh, okay, I, I, I would be happier to make it work without any boundaries. But with, again, if I'm adding boundaries, I have a good, I mean, I have a huge problem with details already. So I need to be really careful about what to do with that. So one hope might be so to introduce additional feed to completely establish that. And maybe, maybe you have a way to make source. And but in gauge theory, not in traffic, but in gauge theory, it is showing to work. In gauge theory, you can do everything by adding the edmonds and it will work the uh, process. Are you assuming global hyperbolicity? Sorry? Are you assuming global hyperbolicity or something like that? In background? I think it is background. Well, even if it's not globally yeah, probably you can still find a generalized Cauchy slide and make everything work. Up to uh, be careful of what happened in the neighborhood of the boundary. That's, that's... Uh, so you're not necessarily. No, I'm not necessarily. Okay, so any other questions from the Zoom audience? Okay, then uh, for now, let's thank the speaker for a very interesting talk and a lively discussion with us. Thank you very much.